Man gets 23 years jail for the 2015 rape, murder and mutilation of a nine-year-old boy. One bandit held two on the run after robbing Canal No. 2 family. And do not pay increased bus fares, the United Minibus Union urges. These and more right now are in our Tuesday, July 3 edition of MTV's News Update. I'm Ashley Scotland. Good evening to our viewers in Guyana and online. One suspected bandit has been captured while two others are on the run after robbing an Alliance Canal No. 2 polder West Bank Demerara family of an undisclosed sum of cash and jewelry early this morning. Police spokesman Superintendent Jairam Ramlakan said about two hours today, a 31-year-old businessman was sleeping in a hammock under a shed in his yard when he was confronted by two armed bandits who held him at gunpoint and demanded cash and valuables. The bandits later took the man inside his home, gun-butted him and relieved him of a large sum of cash in the presence of his family. The victim engaged the bandits in a physical confrontation and during which one of the gunmen was disarmed while the magazine fell out from the other bandit's gun. The victims then quickly armed themselves with instruments and wounded the suspects who fled in a waiting vehicle. Two live 9mm rounds were found at the scene and an unlicensed 9mm pistol taken from one of the suspects was handed over to the police. The driver of the vehicle was captured by the victims and handed over to the police while two gunmen remain on the run. Despite heightened security measures at the prisons across Guyana, contraband items continue to find their way into the hands of inmates at these facilities. Yanis Abrams reports. The Guyana Prison Service this morning found several contrabands just outside the Lusignan prisons after an unknown individual was seen at the northeastern section of the prison. The director of prisons, Gladwin Samuels, informed the media that the person attempted to throw a black plastic wrapped parcel over the prison's fence. Reports are that ranks fired at the individual who made good his escape. However, in the process, dropped the 10 parcels. During the search, 1,002 grams of narcotics, a large quantity of tobacco leaves, four cell phones without SIM cards, one charger, one earpiece, and 33 packets of Bristol cigarettes were found in the parcel. Checks were conducted by both police and prison ranks of the adjoining village and access roads where no one was seen. On Friday last, Public Security Minister Kemra Dramjatan said he is in conversation with the Finance Minister Winston Jordan to allocate money in the 2019 national budget for scanners in the prisons. Further, he spoke about the prison officers having relationships with the inmates. And it goes, of course, to the quality of... Uh, and you can you can say it's, it's like the, the the abnormal seems to be the rule there. You know, and we're trying as much. I, I now have to get to technological um, about the thing. You'd have to get scanners at the doors that can pick up these things. So because I don't think you can um, collude with scanners. But the the the, the thing has to get that far now, and I've been speaking to Ministry of Finance for the next budget process, 2019, that we buy scanners for those um, doors that are entry and exit points at these prisons. These scanners are very expensive. And I hope that people are not going to bypass the scanners too. Issues of contraband at the jailhouses across the country has been an ongoing issue as a number of illegal items tend to find their way into the hands of inmates. As recent as June, a three-hour search by the Joint Services at the said prison, a marijuana plant was found. Additionally, eight cell phones, ten cell phone batteries, five chargers, seven phone cards, two SIM cards and memory cards were discovered among other illegal items. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. More news after the break. Stay with us. At Optic Vision Care, we value the power of your sight. And with our team of eye care professionals, you'll be in good hands. Come experience our comprehensive eye examination using state-of-the-art technology and specialized diagnostic equipment at four convenient locations in Mahaika, Grove, Giftland Mall, 
and East Street. At Optique, we care, you see. Call us today, 227-7744. by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26 or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Tayo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances. Clothing. Cell phones and accessories. And much, much more. Me so much in this store, guys. Me Tayo's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit? No, me know the secret. I like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody know the secret. <laughs> Welcome back, you are with a news update. Parliamentary Public Accounts Committee is being asked to suspend scrutiny of accounts of regional democratic councils until delinquent officials can get themselves in order. Details from Sandy Ramutar. Member of the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament, Juan Egil, says he will not support any vote to suspend scrutiny of the accounts of regional democratic councils. In a June 26 letter to the PAC, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Communities requested that all examination of the Auditor General report for the remaining RDCs be placed on hold. But Edgel says no. But I'm saying the government has a majority in the committee, like every other committee, and even though the opposition chairs the committee, the government has the majority, so they can very well use the majority to suspend it, but that is timing the work of the PAC. This decision is said to have stemmed from the unsatisfactory level of performance before the Parliamentary Accounts Committee by regional executive officers. However, Edgel claims lack of competence and ineptitude as the main determining factors leading to the decision. Well, ultimately the members of the Public Accounts Committee will have to make that decision. But I am making my objection known from now. I am not prepared for the work of the PAC to be stymied because some incompetent, ineptitude, in, in, inept uh, public official needs more time to prepare. Prepare for what? A collective decision will be handed down by the committee at the next sitting of the PAC on July 9. The PAC is responsible for examining audited accounts as presented in the Auditor General's report showing the appropriation of sums granted by the National Assembly. Several of the REOs were sent packing from PAC meetings over unpreparedness while a number of alleged corrupt activities were unearthed, including cases where millions of dollars of taxpayers' monies were unaccounted for. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. 
The Shonagom's Cornelius Ronald reports that Guyana may soon be able to restart catfish exports to the United States as officials here have submitted reconfigured inspection guidelines to U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA. Chief Fisheries Officer of the Ministry of Agriculture, Denzel Roberts, said a team of experts from the Veterinary Public Health Unit and the Agriculture Ministry dispatched a letter along with reconfigured guidelines to the U.S. Department of Agriculture to have the ban lifted. Roberts is anticipating a response from the U.S. authorities within weeks. We did what we had to do. Now it's up to them to, to look at it. and um, We had to insert some... Um, Procedures in the inspectional manual procedures and in the, the regulations regarding the visit of inspectors. All catfish species, including Hassa, were banned from the U.S. Department of Agriculture over Guyana's failure of meeting basic quality control standards. Since the ban was made public back on March 11, operators have been complaining about the hardship it has placed on the industry. Guyana's fish export to U.S. markets accounts for over 70% of the country's overall fish export. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Godfrey Brooms now reports that the United Minibus Union is urging commuters not to pay any increased fares to bus operators who are demanding more until the Ministry of Business and the Union arrive at a consensus. The United Minibus Union is decrying the unreasonable hike in minibus fares by certain Route 42 bus operators. During an interview with the union's president, Ion Andrews, he confirmed that some of the bus operators have increased their fares by as much as $60. Andrews is urging persons not to travel in buses with increased fares as they are liable to pay the fare the operator calls. Despite being the president of the union, Andrews said he has no control of the individual hiking bus fares. I do not agree with that, but then again, you know, if those persons put a, a fair structure in their bus and people go into those bus, they have to pay them. There's no control. The union is also urging minibus operators to consider the financial status of commuters before charging them exorbitant amounts. Bus operators have been calling for increased fares, while some went ahead with such due to the increase in the price of fuel. The United Minibus Union is scheduled to meet with the Ministry of Business in a matter of days to draft a standard fare structure. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The International Court of Justice, ICJ, has given Guyana up to November 19 to say why the court has the power to make the legal judgment in the Guyana-Venezuela border dispute. The court in a statement also gave Venezuela until April 19, 2019 to make a counter-argument. In its order, the court pointed out that, in the circumstances of the case, it must first resolve the question of its jurisdiction, any proceedings with an actual hearing of the arbitral award of 3rd October 1899, which determined the boundaries of Guyana and Venezuela. Foreign Affairs Minister Carl Greenwich asked the court for nine months to prepare a petition. Recently, Venezuela's Vice President, Delcy Rodriguez Gomez, said that the court manifestly lacked jurisdiction and her country was not prepared to participate in any proceedings. After years of hiatus, the border controversy flared in early 2015 when ExxonMobil announced that it had made a significant oil discovery in the Starbrook block, an area Venezuela has been laying claim on. In this Sandy Ramatar report, you will hear that Caribbean community CARICOM leaders are strongly considering the decriminalization of small quantities of marijuana in the 15-member grouping. CARICOM Secretary General Orwin LaRock told reporters at a news conference at the weekend that leaders of the 15-member grouping are expected to consider reports submitted by an independent panel on marijuana at their ongoing meeting in Jamaica. The report contains, among other things, the issue of decriminalization, marijuana for medicinal purposes, and calls for cross-border trade of the herb. Speaking to the current laws, which allows for those in possession of small quantities of marijuana face lengthy jail terms, Ambassador LaRock agree that there needs to be major legislative reforms to deal with this problem. And why must why must we put you know why must a youth a youth man go into into prison for having a spliff? 
and you and you have other people beating up on people and stabbing people and still getting out and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's some real issues to be addressed. Um, but but doing that is not going to make us overnight um, become a, a major trader in, in, in medical marijuana unless we do the research, unless we have the capital to invest in it. While the Secretary General has expressed confidence in legalizing medical marijuana, as well as small quantities, he's uncertain about the international trade of the herb. If I would, the cross-border movement of marijuana is controlled by um, UN, um, UN resolutions um, that has caused it to be deemed to be a, 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 a yes, a harmful drug. Um, so we also have to work at the front of the of the United Nations to see if that can also be addressed uh, properly. The Commission on Marijuana was established in 2014 with the intention of inquiring into the social, economic, health and legal issues surrounding marijuana use in the Caribbean. In Guyana, there has been calls for there to be legislative changes to decriminalize small quantities of marijuana. The Alliance for Change has tabled a bill in the National Assembly to this effect, but that piece of proposed legislation has been languishing on the order papers for some time now. Already, the opposition People's Progressive Party has signaled its intent to support the bill, but the challenge has been to get the wider government, APNU-AFC coalition, to buy into the proposal. Sandy Ramutar, Frame TV's News Update. A man who raped, murdered and mutilated the private parts of a nine-year-old boy back in 2015 was today jailed for 23 years without the possibility of parole. We will tell you more about this and other stories when we return. Stay with us. business i noticed you yesterday you're there watching 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 today you're there here again why are you minding my business i fed up your nosy self yeah baby i just love your windows why are you bothering me window like you housing a window what kind of window really in your house i got some all over's windows that i need to change louvers <laughs> best day and age people still got louvers when i girl i let you in for a secret right Peace and got a special deal right now. You go along there, you buy 10 window, you get a free bathroom window. Oh, for the love of God, try with them louvers window and go down to Peace and modernize. Peace and windows and doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Join the elite aircraft maintenance engineers. Enroll at the Art Williams and Harry Met Aeronautical Engineering School and graduate with an associate degree in aircraft maintenance engineering. Visit our open day on July 5, 2018 at 10 hours at the Eugene F. Curry International Airport, East Coast, Demerara. Or call us on 222-2155 or 2210. Visit our website at www.aescanada.net. The Art Williams and Harry Met Aeronautical Engineering School. Investing in your future since 1993. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens available in tinted or clear complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing. I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. 
At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. Welcome back, you are watching MTV's A News Update. Police have reportedly responded three days after armed bandits robbed a Mahaika East Coast Demerara family of over $3 million in cash and jewelry. More in this report. A Mahaika goldsmith is left bedridden after two gunmen attacked and robbed him while on his way home last Saturday. According to DNA Jagnarine, he and his wife were driving home when a car drove in front of him and stopped. Two men armed with firearms exited their vehicle and discharged a round at his vehicle. Two men run out with two guns. One come by my wife's side and one come by my side. By my side and just shut the window and shot me through my foot. Asked me to take out all the money from my pocket and me give them all. Mazaweer is all the gold, I'm saying the bag. But the gold was in the glass case. And my wife had to carry them and open the trunk and give them all the gold and the silver. Jagnarine said the man carted off with $3.2 million in cash and jewelry, the third such robbery on him in recent times. Yeah, I'm making a report, but the police never find the band of them. But this trip I make a report. My dad called the police station and the police them set out and don't know where is the um, factory I'm in Mike. Which station you call? Mike Police Station. Jagnarine's wife Padmini Prasad told this newscast that a rank from the Criminal Investigations Department of the Mahaika Police Station only showed up today to take statements three days after the robbery. When contacted, Officer in charge of the Criminal Investigations Department of the Mahaika Police Station, Corporal Sam, disputed the claim, noting that the police visited the scene immediately after the report was made. He said when they arrived at the victim's home, his father said his son, who was shot, was in pain. The rank said that he was escorted by the victim's father to the scene where spent shells were retrieved and photographs of the damaged vehicle were taken. He confirmed that Arank returned to the home today, but that was just to take a statement. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Guyana First, the political party launched by activist Ramon Gaskin, will be monitoring the local government elections due later this year to decide if it will participate in the 2020 elections. Details from Sandy Ramotar. During an interview with this newscast, political commentator Raman Gaskin made it clear that he will not be contesting elections if the rumours of rigged elections become evident. I will look to see if these elections are being rigged. Because if these elections are being rigged, we won't be interested in going into rigged elections. We don't have no time to waste. We're not time wasting people. The political organization will be launching a detailed manifesto at the end of the month. However, the organization is uncertain whether it will be participating in the local government polls due before the end of this year. Gaskin said he will be stringently monitoring the local government election process to assess the transparency of the process. You know, seen every day, all who have eyes to see, let them see, the Bible says. You see every day how they're preparing to make the elections, we're watching them every day. Gaskin launched his political movement back in January, but very little is known of the other members, if there are any at all. He had said his intention is to use the platform as an information forum to apprise the public of what has been taking place under the People's Progressive Party and the People's National Congress, now the coalition government. Gaskin has over time called out the two major political parties on issues of corruption, transparency and accountability, among other issues. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Access to the tongue of Lethem and other parts of Region 9 is becoming more and more difficult for motorists as the trail continues to worsen daily. Many are calling on the government for an immediate intervention. Godfrey Brooms reports. Lethem, one of Guyana's nine towns, is located on the northern side of the Takatu River. 
It was named after a former governor of British Guyana, Sir Gordon Lethem. Many use a small aircraft to reach the beautiful town, but others use the Lethem Trail. While Lethem has lots to offer, in terms of visual attraction and a rich culture, access to this part of Guyana is inaccessible now by land. The slushy Lethem Trail has severely deteriorated and has caused the several laden trucks to topple, resulting in injuries and a loss of commodities. This is causing hardships for minibus operators who ply the Georgetown Lethem route and they have already signaled their intention to hike the fear. But apart from that, what is more worrying for Rupununians is the fact that most of their basic commodities, like fuel and food, are transported to the region by land. And with the current state of the road, commodities are not making it to the town and the reports coming out of the region suggest that fuel and food are running low while business with the supplies are hiking their prices. In August last, the Ministry of Public Infrastructure executed emergency works on the Hunt Oil stretch of the Lethem Georgetown Road, which had become impassable. That made a very little difference, as most of the trail is now virtually impassable for even larger trucks. Junior Minister of Public Infrastructure Annette Ferguson, who commented on the issue, stated that works are being carried out in the area. We have um, international um, exports, imports, um, a local constructing firm that is currently doing some repairs to one of the bridges. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Main City Council can expect innovative ideas for revenue-based projects as a tripartite committee involving the Private Sector Commission has been established. Chairman of the Private Sector Commission Desmond Sears says, a tripartite committee which comprises of the Ministries of Business and Communities, Mayor and City Council, and the PSC will meet in mid-July to find new means of income for the municipality. Sears says during consultations with the council, it was noted that the cash-strapped MNCC was hoping for new and innovative ways of increasing its revenue base. So this, uh, we, we to meet, I think, uh, mid-July, to look at other areas. Because uh, one of the things that we indicated that they, one should not discriminate against containers, in a sense, if the idea is that, well, look, the containers are damaging the roads, then there are other um, vehicles, heavy vehicles that are traversing. And it means that maybe we have to, the council have to widen the net. Further, the chairman states that during discussions with the council about the container fee, many concerns were raised about the impact an increase will have on the consumers. We, we're meeting to, to show that I mean, any increase in the fee is going to be transferred to the populace. You know, people uh, who are going to buy goods, they're going to have to pay more and so on. And you don't want to be in a situation where people are already complaining about the high cost of living to have, um, you know, increased charges. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. A man has been sentenced to 23 years imprisonment without the possibility of parole for the 2015 rape and murder of a nine-year-old boy. This and more in today's Court Roundup. Brian Bob Semple was today jailed for 23 years by Justice Sandil Kisun at the High Court for the rape and murder of nine-year-old Chekwan Gittins back in April 2015. Bob Semple, 25, pleaded guilty to the manslaughter charge and confessed that between April 1 and 4, 2015, at Houston Backlands, East Bank Demerara, he murdered Shaquan Gittins. He was initially indicted for the capital offense of murder but opted to plead guilty to the lesser count. He is not eligible for parole. 
Bob Semple was represented by attorney at law Maxwell McKay. In a plea of mitigation, McKay begged the court to be lenient on his client while stating that no person in their right state of mind would commit such a crime. In 2016, the defendant was committed to stand trial in the high courts after a preliminary inquiry at the Georgetown Magistrates Court before Magistrate Fabio Azor. During his hearing at the magistrate's court, he had undergone a psychiatric evaluation by government psychiatrist Dr. Byro Harry, who deemed him competent to stand trial. Representing the state was prosecutors Mandel Moore and Abigail Gibbs. According to reports, the suspect told investigators that he grabbed the child in April 1, took him a back of Cane View Avenue, Southernfelt, and sodomized him. While doing so, he reportedly choked the lad until he passed out. After committing the gruesome act, he reportedly slept with Gittins under a tree but realized the following morning the boy had died. He then severed the child's private part before having sex with his corpse. He later then dumped the boy's body into a canal. 17-year-old Randy Smith of Lodge made an appearance before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan charged for simple arsony. The charge against the teen reads that between February 2 and March 10 at West Rumveld, he stole four Hummer shocks and four speakers, all at a total value of $160,000, property of Anthony Singh. Smith denied the charge. The prosecution objected to bail based on the fact that the defendant gave the court a different address than the one presented to the police, and that after taking the police to the location where he had the items, escaped from custody. It is said the virtual complainant had parked his vehicle at his business place, secured it and left. But upon his return, he found that the vehicle was broken into and the items were missing. A report was made to the police station and an investigation was carried out, which led to the arrest of Smith. Bail was refused and Smith was remanded to prison. He is to make his next court appearance on July 4 before magistrate for Bayo Azor. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Regional and international news coming up after the break. Curtains and Drapery is proud to introduce their new line of Phoenician blinds to Guyana. So if you're looking to upgrade your home, office or conference room with a sleek modern look, then Phoenician blinds are sure to do the trick. You'll be amazed at how a simple installation of these blinds can transform any space. Phoenician blinds offer optimal light control versus traditional blinds and are customizable and low maintenance. Call us today for a free estimate and let's upgrade those blinds. Also, we've expanded our range of services to include dry cleaning of drapes and carpets. Curtains and Drapery, 110 Regent Street. Our telephone numbers are 225-224 and 226-2019. Yes is a beautiful word. It empowers us. It brings satisfaction. And since you can now earn up to 4% cash back on everyday purchases with Scotiabank Gold MasterCard, that's a lot of satisfaction. Plus, you get a welcome bonus. Scotiabank Gold MasterCard is the card that keeps on giving. So it's easier for you. Say yes to even more cash back. Apply today. Call or visit your nearest Scotiabank branch. In the morning of love and sleep and tight, I'm rolling by like thunder now as I look in your eyes. I hold on. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. 
You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex Toilet Tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. In the region, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro has promoted 16,900 soldiers as a reward for their loyalty. The promotion comes amid a worsening economic and political crisis, during which opposition politicians have called on the armed forces to side with the people. Defense Minister Vladimir Padrino said those promoted had been loyal to the constitutionally elected president. He also praised them for respecting human rights. The promotion comes just 10 days after the UN Human Rights Body released a report saying that Venezuelan security forces had carried out hundreds of arbitrary killings. Internationally, 12 boys and their football coach trapped in a flooded cave in Thailand have received their first food and medical treatment for 10 days. Seven divers, including a doctor and a nurse, joined a group inside the caves in the north of the country after they were discovered alive on Monday. Rescuers are now considering how best to bring the group to safety. More heavy rain could see water levels rise and threaten the ear pocket where the group has taken refuge. The boys were found nine days after they entered the caves in Chiang Rai province following a football training session and became trapped by rising waters caused by heavy rainfall. Let's turn our attention to the Demerara Harbor Bridge schedule. And that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of the top stories we tracked today. Man gets 23 years jail for 2015 rape, murder and mutilation of a 9-year-old boy. A bandit held two on the run after robbing Canal No. 2 family. And do not pay increased bus fares, the United Minibus Union urges. Catch our rebroadcasts at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Ashley Scotland. Thank you for watching. Good night.